Number nine then from paper two of the 2017 New Higher Maths. Here we go. It's this graph of the logarithms question, also known as the experimental data question for five marks here. You're given this information in the graph and you're told that this is the form, the original form of the equation. You have to find the values of k and n. Well, there's two basic ways of doing this, plus a third way. You can either start with the equation of the graph and rearrange it into this form and hence identify the two parts. Or you could start with it in this form and apply logs and expand it into the form of the graph and then compare its features with the graph. There is a third way, which is just to use this equation here and given that you've got two points, you could feed those two points into it like simultaneous equations. But of course you'd have to translate these points back into x's and y's from logs. Anyway, the first way would probably be, you see a line, so what is the equation of that line? Well, it's in, you know where it cuts the vertical axis, so it's going to be of the form y equals mx plus c. You know where it cuts, what's the gradient, so you'd work that out separately. So the gradient will be the distance up over the distance along, which is a positive 12, of course. So the gradient is a quarter. Now, they're not giving you the first mark yet. They're not giving you the first mark until you put it all together and get that equation. So the equation now says the vertical one is actually log base 2 of y. The gradient is a quarter. The horizontal variable is log base 2 of x and the vertical intercept there was 3. Now you get the first mark. Now the plan is just gather that back up until it looks like this. In the marking scheme, it calls that method 1 and method 2, but they're both essentially the same. They both just depend on how do you deal with this 3. Well, I take the logs to one side, so I've got a logarithm equal to 3, and then use the inverse, or will I just make everything a log? So if you were to make everything a log, you would have to say at this point, right, I'll multiply that by 1, and log base 2 of 2 is 1, so I'll have this, maybe do something else just at the same time. I'll pop that quarter inside. So it's log base 2 of x to the quarter, plus 3 times log base 2 of 2. It's got just this part of it as deserving the second mark, and then putting it all together with this quarter going in, and that being evaluated as the third one. So we'll just do that log base 2 of y is log base 2 of x to the quarter plus log base 2 of 2 to the power 3. That's down as the third mark. Now just gather them together. Log base 2 of y is log base 2 of, that's 8 times x to the power a quarter. That's the next mark, so it's fairly straightforward. And then if the logarithm equals a logarithm, then the numbers they operate on, or the terms they operate on, must be the same. So y equals 8x to the quarter. That doesn't get the mark because the question said state the values of k and n. Although it seems to be the mark and seem they're allowing you just to write that instead. But since it said determine, find the values of k and n, I think I'll express them explicitly. k was the number that multiplies, so k is 8. n was the number that gave the power, so n is a quarter. I'll put that down as the mark. The alternative was to leave that 3 alone and join those logs together. So, log base 2 of y is log base 2 of x to the quarter, so you can't really join them until they just say logarithm equals, plus 3, that was a mark. Take that across and subtract, and of course if you're subtracting them, it will be the logarithm of the quotient, so it will be y over x to the quarter equals 3. That gets a mark. And then using the inverse, y over x to the quarter will be 2 to the power 3. That gets the next mark. Finish it off. y equals, and that's 8, x to the power a quarter. And then you get the two values. That's probably the way you would do it. Probably using the first of those. Now the other way would be to start with this and fiddle with that until it looked like this. So you'd start off with y equals k x to the power n. Drying up. Introduce logs to both sides because you notice you've got logs here. So log base 2 of y 
would be log base 2 of kx to the n. Doing that, we get the first mark. Now, expand that. Well, that's log base 2 of k, because it's a product, plus log base 2 of x to the n. So log base 2 of y will be, maybe I'll put that one first, that n can now pop to the front, that power can become the multiplying number, n times log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of k. I guess the next mark. Now it's just a case of comparing that with this. That's the equation of a line. If that's the equation of a line and those are correct, log base 2 for the vertical, log base x for the horizontal, then n must be the gradient. And log base 2 must be the y-intercept, well, the vertical intercept. So you could go straight in with 3 for that. Well, I can rearrange that one. Log base 2 of k is 3, so k will be 2 to the power 3, so k is 8. There's a mark for that and a mark for that. And n is the gradient. Well, the gradient is 3 upon 12, so n is a quarter. And that was the last mark. Now those would be the most common ways of doing it, either starting with the equation of the line and rearranging it back to the original one, or starting with the original one and applying logs to get the equation of the line. There is a third way though, which is to take these two points and feed them back into the original equation and get two simultaneous equations, because notice there's two unknowns. So you could do it that way instead, you have to take the points. So this point here, which is the point zero, 3, what would that translate back to in terms of x, y? In other words, going from log 2x, log 2y, to x, y. Well, the 3, I'll we'll start with the 0. That's the log 2x. Log 2 of x is 0, means x is 2 to the power 0, x is 1. Log 2 of y is 3, meaning y is 2 to the power 3, so y is 8. So there's one pair you could put into this. The other pair is this. Negative 12, 0. What does that go to? Same again. Log base 2 of x is negative 12, which means x is 2 to the power negative 12. Maybe I'll just leave it like that. I don't want to write that out properly, one over room. And log 2 base 2 of y is 0, which means y is 2 to the power 0, so y is 1. So that's 2 to the negative 12, unfortunately. Now, three of the marks go for changing them back to the original x and y coordinates. And it goes two the first time you did it, and one the second time, because you're just repeating yourself. So in the first one, there'd be one for getting that and one for getting that one. But the second time round, because you're just doing the same again, it's just the one. But now you've got to feed those points into this. Well, the best one would be the one where the x equals one first. So using the point one, eight, it would read y, which is eight, is k times x is one to the power n. And of course, one to the power anything is one. So straight away, you've got k equals eight. That's a mark. Now that you know k is 8, you can now write y equals 8x to the n when you come to use the next point, which unfortunately is this one. Negative 12, 1. And that would read 1 is 8 times, and it's 2 to the negative 12 to the power n. Now that's a messy little thing to deal with, but they are all, after all, powers of 2, so maybe I should just rewrite that as that's 2 to the power 0. That's 2 to the power 3 times, and that's 2 to the power negative 12n. And if you're multiplying terms, you add the powers, so that's 2 to the power 3 minus 12n. Now if those numbers are equal, the powers are equal, that means that 3 minus 12n is 0, so 12n is 3, so n is a quarter. That took a lot more. 
Now, I wouldn't imagine many, if any, would do it that way. There's a possibility. It may be appropriate in some situations. I'd imagine the first thing you notice is, there's a straight line. Let's get the equation of that line written down and then just turn it back again.